Um, gallery 5 also includes some of the wonderful, wonderful court costumes that we're all um, used to seeing. We move into Gallery 6, which we call the Family Gallery. Um, and this is a gallery where we actually have some uh, very, very touching um, um, possessions. There's um, the teddy bear that Alexei played with. Uh, we've got actually the clothes that he wore, clothes that his sisters wore. Um, we have a dress that his mom wore. We have his mom's desk. Um, we have a wonderful, wonderful piano that um, Nicholas gave as a gift to her, um, to his wife, um, Alexandra. So as you walk through that gallery, you're able to understand the um, the kinds of things that they wore in daily life, the kind of uh, objects that they played on, that they worked around in. We have uh, board games that the children played with as well in that gallery. And we also have devoted a corner of that room um, to the episode of Rasputin. And uh, that's something perhaps we can do an entire program on. My, um, my take is that um, the um, Rasputin has been given um, a bum rap in, uh, in a lot of the popular literature. Um, I think that all one needs to really do to understand the Rasputin phenomenon is to um, look around uh, everybody today. Um, I understand that uh, to a follower of God uh, who through the power of prayer um, seems um, to relieve the suffering and that seemed to work whereas traditional medicine didn't. So to dismiss him as some kind of a quack or a charlatan I think um, sells him short and doesn't really do justice to the um, anxiety and uh, anguish uh, that the family suffered. And I think we need to revisit that issue from a very, very human uh, way. Um, that's one of the down parts in the, in the exhibition, because I think the exhibition, in my view, is a roller coaster uh, where you get highs and lows. One of the lows is, of course, uh, the pain and suffering of the heir apparent who's had uh, hemophilia. We move then from Gallery 6 in the Rasputin episode, which is kind of like a low point, um, to another high, and that's the Fabergé Gallery, the Treasury Gallery number 7. Uh, on view are, uh, through the generosity of the Forbes magazine collection, New York, the, the Egg, that was made in commemoration of the uh, coronation. And we also have an icon that was uh, made by Fabergé's firm uh, that was given to the royal couple by um, um, our sister Ella, who was married to one of Nicholas's uncles, Sergei, who was the governor of the city of Moscow. Um, the egg in that gallery, by the way, is a replica of the coach that we see behind us right now. Um, the interesting thing in the Fabergé gallery as well are the regalia. The 1896 coronation was the cat's meow. It was the, one of the biggest social blowouts in Europe of the 19th century. Um, and um, as the French were planning for the World's Fair, they asked the Russians, with whom they were culturally close, because French was, after all, the official language of the Russian court at the time, if they could borrow the regalia for the World's Fair in much the same way that, for example, the Vatican lent uh, Michelangelo's Pieta to the World's Fair that was held in New York. Um, the Russians demurred because they said the regalia was too valuable. And as a result, Fabergé made an evocation of the regalia. Uh, to give you some idea of how uh, valuable that regalia is, the one crown alone has over 1,300 diamonds in it. Uh, after it was shown on Paris, Nicholas fell in love with it, so he purchased it for himself, and he kept it. Um, from that Gallery 7, we move into uh, um, Gallery 8, which is um, the court life, and they're magnificent ball gowns. Uh, we've recreated stairways of the Winter Palace, and we've got a long train dress coming down that cascades like a waterfall over the stairs, and uh, uniforms of all of the men in their livery. It's, it's, a, well, it's a fabulous guy. And uh, we also have, um, in 1903, there was a, a famous costume ball where everyone was supposed to come dressed in the garments of the 17th century. Um, they all posed like for a high school yearbook. What did I wear in that thing? So we actually have um, photographs of Nicholas and Alexander in their costume. And we have uh, photographs of other members of the aristocracy in their costume. And that gallery is fantastic because we have three costumes that were actually worn in that, for that ball of 1903. One of them um, was the one that was worn by Felix Yusupov the man that masterminded the murder of Rasputin. So uh, here again, you can tie a name to a costume, I think in a very, very interesting kind of a way. It comes alive a little bit more. Um, from there, we go to the church gallery. And the church gallery is very important because the Russian Orthodox Church played a very, very significant role in the life of Nicholas and Alexandra, um, very, very much so. 
And um, if you look at the pain and suffering of Alexa, you see him uh, surrounded on occasion with a lot of icons. So it's important for us to tell that story. Uh, there are some wonderful, wonderful ecclesiastical chasubles and habits in that gallery as well. Some of them um, uh, embroidered in gold thread, which is really fat. When we continue on Art Is, you will learn about the rule of Nicholas II.